going to be Derek Gunn. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Just wrap things up with Scott Fransky. If you missed any of that interview with the Phillies radio voice, uh, you could check it out at jacobsports.com. You get all, all of our content, either at jacobsports.com or Jacob Sports YouTube channel. You can always go back and watch our shows, and we do appreciate everybody who goes back and watches, uh, for sure. Uh, and tell a friend, hit the like button, do all those good things, um, that's for sure. And yeah, Philly's back at it tonight. It'll be Aaron Nola uh, tonight pitching for the Phils, and they're, they win the night, you get three out of four. And that's all you're looking to do is stack series, that's for sure. All right, we turn our sights now to the Eagles, who practice today, their 10th practice. They'll have uh, a walkthrough tomorrow because they have the game on Saturday at Baltimore. And we talked a little bit earlier, you know, how much the Ravens like to win those preseason games. So we'll, we'll see how that shakes out. But uh, but practice today, Derek. So a uh, couple of names to note that we're back. Um, one, Devontae Smith came back from a personal leave. He was, um, he was at the sentencing for his college teammate, Henry Ruggs, uh, who got sentenced to three to 10 years for uh, his role in the, in the death. He was driving the car in the death of that young lady and her, her, her dog, unfortunately. But uh, Devante supporting his teammate was there. The Eagles gave him the day off. It was excused. He's back. Um, and also back to Kobe Dean, who's been rehabbing that ankle. Um, so those two guys back at practice for the, uh, for the birds. And, and Malcolm Jenkins in the house checking out uh, the action out. Uh, speaking of Malcolm Jenkins, if I'm the young uh, safeties, um, I am tapping into every bit of knowledge I can possibly get. And that includes, you know, Avante Maddox and anybody else who's playing a safety spot. Because uh, during his heyday, especially in his prime, he was one of the best in business in terms of reading defense, reading offenses, playing down in the box, knowing when to shoot gaps, knowing when not to. Um, he is a wealth of information for that organization and for those players. And, you know, you know, Avante played with him for a while mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm, I am getting everything I can out of him for the short amount of time. He's there. I agree. What I mean, you're right. What a resource that you could tap into, man. I'm even, you know, the Eagles have used guys in, you know, like consultant roles before um, Malcolm would not be a bad guy to have around for, for a couple of weeks in, in camp in general, you know, exactly more than just exactly. one day for sure. Especially, you think about it, you know, this is a very, well, I, I wouldn't say Terrell Edmonds is young, but you got a lot of young safeties here, you know, with Blankenship oh, and, Sidney Brown and some of these other guys. Yeah. He, he'd be a good guy to tap into, man. That's for sure. Um, the, the other thing is Nick Sirianni would not confirm or deny the, the starters will play in that first game. So I think two things are at play when he says that one I think he means most of them will not play. I don't think there's much chance that, that you're going to see Jalen Hurts or Devontae Smith for that right, matter. Right. But I also think it leaves a little bit of wiggle room for him if he wants to maybe play Blankenship a little bit, just for example. Or maybe if he wants to play one of the younger guys who might be considered a starter a little bit. I, that you may see. I don't think you're going to see much, but you may see a little bit of that. What do you think? I think on defense, it's a lot easier to mix and match like certain players that would be considered starters more so than an offense. On offense, if my starting quarterback's not playing, why am I playing my starting offensive line of front line receivers? That's yeah. not going to happen. But there's some running backs who might get some, you know, Penny. Penny and, and Swift might get a little run just to just to get, you know, acclimated to the to the system here and the calls and the audibles here. They They might see some time in the backfield behind the second offensive line, which is still not a bad offensive line for the Eagles. But when it comes to the defense, I can see Jalen Carter, Reed Blankenship, you know, Nolan Smith, guys who are going to be counted on heavily, getting some reps out there, getting it down, getting the timing down, getting the calls down, so on and so forth. And then, of course, you got Miles Jack. You know, if he's playing in the middle now, if he's getting acclimated, he's played both the middle and the outside. If he's going to play the middle, if, if Nolan's hurt until further notice – then he needs to be in there also, you know, making the calls and stuff. You know, Cunningham needs to be in there, hearing the calls and stuff like that. Um, offense, if my starting quarterback's not playing, there's no need to put anybody else I consider a starter on, on offense out there. It really yeah. isn't. No, I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, let me ask you, because I don't think there's any way he plays in this game, so let me be clear about that. But when it comes to N'Kobe Dean, who, uh, you know, did get some reps last year, on special teams, but not a lot. 
do you think he should be playing in preseason games? Take this one out of the equation because he's still coming back from the ankle. But the next two, or do you, is it all about those joint practices that the coaches, you know, have, have really turned into almost preseason games now? I would say the amount of time he plays is based on what the coaches see in terms of is he making the correct quick calls, number one. The first game, I would not play him more than a couple of series and then sit over there and discuss, okay, what did you see? How did it feel? Why did you make this call? This is what, or this is what you should have called. Second game, I expand his role. The third game, I expand his role just a little bit. Maybe a quarter, no more than a quarter and a half, just so he gets all the terminology down, the audibles down, so on and so forth. Outside, but I do think there's some value in him playing because he didn't get a lot of playing time last year. Basically, this is his red shirt year, mm-hmm. you know, in a lot of ways. So, yes. I do think I would like to see him out there, but because he's coming off that high ankle sprain, you know, it makes me a little nervous, Rob, because high ankle sprains are so tricky. They are so, so, so tricky, like a hamstring. Yeah. Um, and, and when you're talking about, you know, you need for a guy who pr- predicates a lot of what he does with his speed, his lateral speed, straight ahead speed, you got to be real careful how you use him, no matter how heavily uh, that, that thing is taped. So I would, I would pump the brakes. I'd give him a little run, let him go, but I'd pump the brakes real quick on his involvement in those preseason games. Yeah, like I, I think there are certain guys that fall into this category, and I, and I, I frankly, I don't know if Nicobe Dean is one of them. But even though he's a first round pick, I think we're definitely going to see a little bit of Nolan Smith, don't you? I, I mean, yes. yeah. So I, I, I yeah. think Nolan Smith. I like I said, I, I'd play. Reed Blankenship would get some time for me. Yes, um, Jalen Carter even gets some time for me. Carter would get a little bit of time. Um, I don't know that they would do that with Jordan Davis. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Well, you know, definitely, definitely, yeah. I, I would play. I would play Jordan Davis at least one or two series just based on this. I want to see how he moves in game action. You know, we all thought, and even Jordan Davis said that he when he came in last year, he wanted to get his weight down. Right. Then we find out this year that he's uh, over three forty. But he feels better. I don't know if he changed his diet. He said his condi- yeah. He said he weighs the same, but his yeah. conditioning is much better in terms of stamina. Okay. His right. work. I, I want to see. It. I just want to get a small sample of it. Right. You know, that's all I need. I don't need a lot in the preseason game. You know, especially if Baltimore's playing their ones. I want to see this. I want to see my big man against their ones. Yep. You know, at least for a series, at least for one series, and then get him out. Call it a day. Sit down. Study it. Up. Rest of the game. You know, and then compare it to where somebody, whoever's in the game for him afterwards, compare it to what they're doing. Here's what he's doing that you didn't do, or here's what I'm glad you did that he's not doing right now. So mm-hmm. it's firmly etched in his mind in terms of what they expect from me this year. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm with you. Like to me, measuring him against a, a, a group of ones in in the second preseason game or whatever, I, I'm to him being Nicobe, I, I, I would be really interested in that. I'd be really interested in Jordan Davis too going against a number one offensive guard or center and, and seeing what that looked like. Yes. Yeah. And I think that kind of stuff is invaluable. I know there's a risk and I know I get it. And I'm, this is not me questioning the way the Eagles do things because how can you, when all 22 guys started last year for the Super Bowl? Right. But I, I would, I think that's something that this team, it's a little bit different this year because there's more inexperienced guys yeah. than you had last year. It was much more, there were more veterans, especially on the defensive side. Exactly. Um, and again, because of the freaky accidents that happen and injuries that happen, uh, you kind of err on the side of caution. But you want certain guys to work up a sweat um, because you see things in game situations, even though even though it's going to be vanilla on both, both sides of the ball, you're still going to see things in game situations you don't see in a practice situation. Yeah. You know, and you want the, the learning curve to start now. You know, you don't want to wait until – because by the time you by the time you hit that last preseason game, you know, it's meaningless because you're playing a bunch of guys who are just trying to hang on and make a roster or guys who are trying to get material to, to sell themselves to another team. Yeah. So it's meaningless then, which means you would not get um, a real a- analysis of what it is and what isn't until that first regular season game. Yeah. And with everybody playing three preseason games now, you don't have the luxury of that fourth game anymore. Yep. Yeah, it's a good point. It's huge. Well, the other thing is, like, I don't view – I don't know about you. I know a lot of people kind of just poo-poo and you know, preseason uh-huh. games or whatever. But 
you know, it, it's still a showcase for a guy who's trying to make it if there is a spot open. So I still think it's critical. I still think it's important. I, you know, well, well, do I, I get that everybody doesn't watch games the way that I do you know, in, with the volume of it and, and as much as they watch, but I still think it's an important, like that's, that's why I'm going to be, I have to be in on it Saturday night, but you know, I, I'm going to, I would be in on it even if I was oh, yeah. just watching as a fan, put it that way. And, and, and I know it's going to put, I know it's going to push into your bedtime, but uh, <laughs> it's worth your, it's worth your interest to stay up just a little bit longer to see this game. Hopefully, hopefully they don't have a lights issue in this game like they did at the uh, Hall of Fame game. You oh, know, they prolonged the game by like oh, 30 minutes. We're, we're, we have a little Hall of Fame game story later that we'll get into uh, yeah. where some people got some some cash out of it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm – look, I, I think the the other thing is – and I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself and I don't care. I'm going to put it out there right now. Right. Nolan Smith's my guy, Derek. He's your guy this year? He's my guy. Yeah, he's my guy. Okay. Um, he had a quote today. You'll have to, you'll have to kill me to stop me. Yeah. And there was a story about him when he tore his, I think it was his Packers. I forget what it was, but his shoulder is on his arm last year. And he didn't get to, he didn't get to be on the field when they won the national championship right. Dr- right. drives him. He was on it the year before, but anyway, the day after he has surgery, I'm not talking about the army of the surgery on, but the other arm. He's in there you know, lifting weights and the training staff walked in. They're like, what are you doing? He's like, what, why? I, I, I got to stay in shape. I got like this dude, he's a beast. And I'm telling you, Derek, he's, he's like angry in a good way. Like, there is an edge to Nolan Smith that I love. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested in seeing how much playing time he actually gets. If he is the backup to Hassan Reddick, you mm-hmm. know, Hassan Reddick's not coming off the field much unless no. he's injured. So where do you, where else do you utilize Nolan Smith? if it's not a Hassan Reddick spot. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing I'm most curious about. Because Do you flip on the both sides? Does, does he does he get a possibly. little bit of run for sweat? Possibly. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would assume as much, but I, I got to see him. I want to see him. You know, you, you, he's a first-round draft pick. I got to see this kid. Nobody thought he would be on the board at 30. Right. You know, I want to see what he looks like. Yeah. You know, and, I, and, and, and that's beyond preseason. I want to see – what he looks like in a regular season game, what kind of explosiveness he has off that edge. When he drops back in covers, what kind of cover guy is he? You know, things like that. I I, I want to see, I can't wait to see it, mm-hmm. you know, and because of what Reddick has accomplished, not just last year, but the last three years, you know, he's your primary weapon on that side of the field. Oh, Where yeah. else does Nolan fit in? I agree. I agree. Look, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's a, to be able Uh-oh. to throw, Get ready, it's coming. It's, it's it's pouring here now. Oh yeah, it's it's uh it is looking mighty dark where I'm at too. Like it, we're about to get it. We're, we're about it's, to get it. It's not like that monsoon we got the other day with the with the tornadoes and all that stuff. But that was rough. It's coming down pretty good yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. So keep keep your fingers crossed. Um, the other the other name that keeps popping up and again today. Joseph Nagata, the undrafted free agent out of Clemson, Derek, is making noise. He had another okay. good day today. He was running a little bit, some reps with the ones today. Um, this guy's got a shot, Derek. He's got a shot to make the team. Well, Rob, historically, we know the Eagles are not shy about keeping undrafted players. We've seen that happen time and time again. Um, and if he's got something that the Eagles can use, trust me, they're not going to let this kid get away. And and I would imagine, but is he good enough to make a 53? When you think about yeah. all the positions, you know, X amount of players at this spot, this spot, this spot. I don't care what kind of campus he, he's having. Is he good enough to make the 53? That's that's the interesting thing. And yeah. if they try to if they try to hide him on the practice squad and other people are watching him because everybody's got scouts and 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 so on and so forth everywhere. As much as they would like to keep him, yeah, you might not be able to hide him. him off. Yeah. yeah. Six three, two seventeen. I like his size. I mean, he's got good size for sure. Man. But you're right. If you look at it just from a numbers crunch, okay. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins, Alameda Zacchaeus, right there, automatically there's four. Okay. Yep. Now you start to think double uh, uh special teams and and Britton Covey, wh- wh- however you feel about him, you know, I, I think he's probably making the team, right? Yeah, your boy Covey's going to be back there. Crash Covey is going to be back there, I believe. Okay, so you're at five now. Yep. 
right? You maybe you get one more. Yeah, some teams will kick will keep six re, uh, receivers. So, I, um, yeah, possible. it's a possibility. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not as it's not as like man. You're a running back. Good luck. Uh, you know, it, it's hard on this team if you're a running back. But maybe, maybe he's got a shot. I mean, again, just one of those names to throw out there. The other one on the other side of the ball is Makai Garner. He's he's played really really well, and at least that area I think is a little bit more doable. Uh, in terms yes. of maybe being able to make it. Yes, uh, I would agree with you there. There's a little bit more openness on that side of the ball, um, but again, depends on what they keep at certain positions. It just yeah. you just don't, never know. You know, everybody's different. Some teams will only keep five wide outs. Some like to keep six for various reasons. Some teams keep three running backs. Some teams like the Eagles having to pass will keep four. You know, you just don't know when it comes to the number game. And when it comes to t- keeping X amount of players, and, you know, let's face it, this Eagles team, what did they have? Ten offensive linemen make the roster last year? And most most teams have nine. They, they kept ten if, if, mm-hmm. if, if coming out of camp. You know, somebody's the odd man out. You know, now granted, with the, the practice squad being as expanded as it is now, that bodes well for a lot of teams – that want to keep certain players, but you're also subject to somebody coming in picking off something you have. Yeah. And then you got to find another piece to the equation to bring in. So, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, I, let me throw one more candidate out there. Our question was, it, it, you know, the, who are you most interested in watching play on Saturday? Yeah. The other guy I throw out there is Sidney Brown. I want to see Sidney yeah. Brown yeah. Saturday. I want to see him flying around and, you know, all you hear about is this dude is just energy you know, personified. So I, I want to see him too on set. Yeah, I want to see Ringo also. You, yeah. we, we, we saw what he did in college. I want to see both of them. I want to see, you know, who knows? Maybe they they might be out there together, you know, okay. at the same time, mm-hmm. you know, and I want to see what they look like. You know, I, I, I'm not expecting them to be NFL ready, but I'm expecting them to be energetic, flying around the field. If you're going to make mistakes, make mistakes playing full board. Mm-hmm. You know, and then go back to the boardroom and cr- and critique some of the things that you did wrong. But I just want to see him get out there flying around. You know what's going to happen if Sidney Brown goes out there and has, let's say, a couple of picks against a number three quarter uh, quarterback or something like that. Everybody, you know, replace him. You know, he's ready to take. To take. No, he's not. The organization is not going to do that. So, but yeah. I just want to see him. I just want to see what they look like. All right, offensive side. I, I, Mariota apparently has looked better lately. Okay. Um, I want to see him, especially if he's going against twos on Baltimore, go out there and deal a little bit, you know, and and, and look good out there. I'd like to see that uh, offensively. I want to see Steen, you know, as much as you can see from an uh, interior offensive lineman, what yeah. that looks like. But I, I I'm curious what he's going to look like out there. Well, I want to see I want to see Zacchaeus run routes with this with this team. Yeah. I, I don't care who the quarterback is. You know, I'm not as intrigued by Mariota. I've seen enough of Mariota in his NFL career. Yeah. We already know he's the number two quarterback, no matter what happens, um, unless something tragically happens like an injury. So we already know that. We already know um, what what he looks like, both good and bad. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a bunch of other names. You know, I, I want to see, uh, and I don't think it's going to happen. I want to see Swift and Penny in this offense. I don't think that's that that's going to happen. Um I want to see the young receiver you were talking about, Nagata, um, yeah. and, and see what he looks like. Um, I want to see Stoll and, and some more Calcaterra yep. on the offensive side of the ball. Not just blocking, but in pass-catching situa- situations. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to see, believe it or not, keep your fingers crossed, I, I wish I could see this Tyree Jackson, but I, I know he's, you know, What's the prospects of that? I'm looking well, at. Well, I mean, he right. He better. I mean, he's he's in a he's in a real numbers crunch at that position. I mean, you have you just mentioned it. Calcaterra, Dan Arnold's here now. Stole yeah. all yeah. behind Dallas Goddard. Yeah, you know, and and here's a guy. You know, what is he? Could he possibly? Could he possibly be that guy? I mean, he's six seven, two fifty. He has some talent. We've just never seen it. Mm-hmm. I just I just want to see see it again, you know, before he gets hurt again. You know, every time the guy steps on the field, he ends up hurt. I know it's a shame. Like I really felt like his rookie year, he was on his way. He was having a great camp, and then he broke a bone in his back, um, and then and then the following year, he blew out his ACL, and it just it it's hard enough converting from it. I mean, that's hard quarterback to tight end, and he is a gigantic human being, a big man. But big he's man. got unbelievable 
skills. Like he can move, man, for for a giant dude. Like I almost feel like he just he may be one of those guys who ends up somewhere else and develop eventually develops into something. Yeah, yeah. you know. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect him to be much of a blocker. He's going to be your catching the ball down the field kind of guy, mismatch size yeah. wise. Um, if, if you could convert him, man, what a red zone threat he would be, you know, oh. but again, how, when are we going to see it? Well, I don't know if we'll ever see it. He's got to do it in these preseason games and he's got to do it in the joint practices. He's got it. And that's, that starts right. That's next week. Y- yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, keep your fingers crossed on that one. I think the potential's there, but yeah. Yeah. So the, the schedule is Saturday at seven, the Baltimore game at Baltimore. And then the other two games are at the link both Thursdays, seven thirty on uh a week from today, and then uh eight o'clock the twenty fourth. Yep. Yeah, that's the Colts. So it goes Cleveland and then the Colts. And then then you have a good what seventeen you've seventeen days off in between. Until, man, people, that's the that's the torture. Yeah. That seventeen days are t- pure torture for a fan aren't they uh dude that you know what people are gonna be losing their minds between that last preseason game oh. and the time the regular season rolls around it, it's it's like it's like built-in torture for a football fan who cannot wait to see this team hit the ground running especially because there's so much anticipation of this team getting back to a super bowl again with this infusion of two first round picks mm. and the potential of the of the sydney browns and the keely ringos and stuff like that you know, yeah. people are going to be losing their minds over football. That's where you start overthinking things. Right? That's where you start, oh, my God, they're not good enough here. They're not good enough here. And, uh, and then you start picking every little thing apart. Meanwhile, yeah. yep. the Eagles roster, other than maybe the Chiefs, is is as good, or, or if not better, than anybody else. But that is when you you start driving. Your show. Tina's right. The first two games being f- four days apart is torture, too, to start the season. Because you do. she's right. Like, all of a sudden, it's there. And then it's like, wait. They play Thursday? Like, we don't yeah. get a chance to, like, fully soak in yep. what took place in the New England game. So you go from 17 days of torture into two games within a four-day span. That's pretty yeah. pretty crazy. Absolutely. Oh, man. All right. Let's come back. I got two questions for you, NFL-wise. Yeah. One, we're going to dig into the AFC South and, and break down how we think it finishes, number one. Number two, yesterday, Derek, we did teams that were – that that weren't in the postseason last year right had an opportunity to be in the playoffs we're flipping the script here on this one this is teams that were playoff teams last year that we think could be on the outside looking in this season so we'll do that when we come back don't go anywhere we'll continue with the you know certainly we're not done with the no hitter or the eagles talk that's for sure but we got a lot of ground to cover coming back he's derek i'm rob we're sports take jacob sports youtube network let's talk about pro action restoration if you have a home, you have a business, and you've gone through the, the the pain, the inconvenience of water, fire, smoke, mold damage, look, I got the place for you. This is who you reach out to. It's Pro Action Restoration, and they're on call 24 hours, seven days a week to assist you. I know personally, I called them on a Saturday. They got right out. They fixed the problem. They cleaned up my parents' basement, and it couldn't have been a better experience, I'm telling you. They are licensed, bonded, fully insured. They've been serving the tri-state area for more than two decades. Pro Action Restoration will work in conjunction with your insurance company. So again, it could be water, fire, smoke damage, mold remediation, you name it, they can handle it. Give them a call, 610-623-3760, 610-623-3760, or online at proactionrestoration.com. That's 